we are starting the last chapter of the unit of genetics and evolution we have done the first part that is mendel's uh, laws various types of inheritance and the second one that is molecular basis and now the last one that is evolution before we actually take the process of evolution various uh, theories and everything let us talk about certain basic things which we already no, and here we are not very 100% sure, but it is like uh, most likely this is probably what happened. Universe was formed about 20 billion years ago. This is the estimated time when our universe was formed. Earth was formed. 4.5 billion years ago and life originated life originated approximately 4 billion years ago and various techniques were used by scientists like carbon dating and many more advanced techniques to estimate this time now when life originated on earth what were the conditions conditions on earth at the time of origin of life first thing the temperature was very high so high temperature when life originated it was extremely hot the lighter elements, they were present in the form of gases. So there were gases and lighter elements made these gases. Methane, ammonia, hydrogen, helium and water vapor. Why water vapor? Because temperature was very high. So all that water which was present was in the gaseous form. The heavy elements like iron, nickel, they made the core of the earth. And ultraviolet radiations were present. So UV rays, they were the energy source and they favored photochemical reactions. Favored photo chemical reactions so these were the conditions which existed now when we are talking of these gases we find methane ammonia hydrogen helium but there is no reference of oxygen because here there was no molecular oxygen and when oxygen is absent we call the condition as reducing that means the atmosphere, the atmosphere was reducing. So at the time of origin of life, the conditions which existed were high temperature, gases, no oxygen, that means reducing atmosphere, heavy metals or heavy elements formed the core of the earth, ultraviolet radiations were present in the form of energy giving radiations and they favored photochemical reactions. Let us talk about the theories which are commonly discussed when we talk of origin of life. So here we are talking of theories. Theories of origin of life. The first theory is called the theory of special creation. Special creation. And this theory is based on religious beliefs. It was believed that life was created by God in heaven and then that created living form were placed on earth. We'll take two examples. According to Bible, in Bible there is a chapter of Genesis which talks about how this life originated on earth. 
So, according to this, the first man was Adam and the first woman was Eve. So, this is how life was created. God created Adam and Eve and God brought these two individuals on earth and from there the life actually evolved. Another example is according to Hindu mythology. According to Hindu mythology, Brahma is the creator of this universe or everything what is existing. So, Brahma is considered as the creator. And the first, this is what Bible talks about, the first man and the first woman. But according to Hindu mythology, the first man was Manu and the first woman was Shraddha. So, according to mythological beliefs or religious belief, life was created by God in heaven and individuals were placed on earth and from there the life evolved. But scientifically, there is no proof of such kind of thing which has happened. The second theory that we talk of is of abiogenesis. Abiogenesis. Abio means non-living and genesis is synthesis of formation. So as the name tells us, it was believed that life originated from non-living things. This theory was proposed by one Helmont and there were a couple of uh, scientists who put forth their views. Some said that the hair of the tail of white horse gave rise to a worm called Gordius. Some scientists said that the mud of Nile River, mud of Nile River gave rise to various organisms. This theory of abiogenesis was disproved by the experiment which was done by Reddy, Francisco Reddy. And he put forth the next theory that was of biogenesis. According to abiogenesis, it was believed that the life originated from non-living things. The next theory, which is biogenesis, says that life originated or originates from the pre-existing living forms. There were three scientists who gave experiments in support of it. So let us talk about the third one, that is biogenesis. The next theory, that is the third, is of biogenesis. And biogenesis means, say, that is, life is originating from the pre-existing living forms. Here there were three uh, experiments which were performed to support this theory. The first experiment was by Francisco Reddy. What he did was, he took pieces of meat or flesh. Flesh was taken, it was cooked. And he packed those pieces in various jars. First jar, he took this piece of meat and covered it with parchment membrane. So this was the piece of flesh and it was covered by parchment membrane. The second jar was the same thing. The cooked meat piece was taken and it was covered by muslin cloth. So next time this was muslin cloth. And the third jar was kept open. So here also there was a piece of meat or flesh and it was open. So three such cases were taken or three such jar jars were taken and this was tied basically. He found that 
house flies or these flies, they were found uh, hovering around all three jars. But after some time, he found that there were some larvae on this piece of meat which was kept in open jar. The conclusion which was drawn was that the house flies who came here or visited this piece laid their eggs on this meat piece and that's how the maggot or the larva was seen on this. The flies came closer to this, these two jars but they were not able to reach to that piece and that is why they were not able to lay their eggs here. That means the life which originated on this piece was actually coming from the flies which were already existing. A similar kind of experiment was done by another scientist, Spallanzani. Only difference was he took three jars with hay infusion and same thing. One jar was kept open and other jars were closed. And in open jars, this life form, various spores, they were found. And the third experiment was by Pasteur. So Pasteur's experiment is uh, known as swan neck experiment. The reason was the vessel or the container he chose was a round bottom flask with a long neck and he bent this neck in the shape of the swan's neck and that is why this name was given to this experiment. So after taking sugar and yeast mixture in this container, he heated this long neck of the round bottom flask. Because of heating, this neck got bent and he sealed it. The opening was sealed. As long as this opening was kept sealed, nothing was found on this mixture of sugar and yeast. But when this neck was broken, after some time he found living organisms here because through the air, the spores must have entered into this and they would have re uh, reproduced or divided here. That means again, the life which is coming or getting originated on this medium is coming from the living forms which are already existing. So this theory was of biogenesis. That means life originates from the pre-existing life forms. The fourth theory is known as panspermiatic theory. Panspermiatic theory. It is also known as extraterrestrial or extraterrestrial theory. Some scientists believe that life originated in space and it came on earth in the form of some structures which were called spores and in this spore thing they had actually made a human figure kind of a structure. So it was said that this life originated in the space and it came to earth in the form of spores and this is known as panspermiatic theory or panspermia or extraterrestrial. The next theory that is the modern theory and modern theory is the one which is the most accepted one and it is known as chemogenetic theory or it is also known as the modern theory of origin of life and it is explained in three steps. So let us talk about this theory in detail.